Good morning, Jerry. How are you? Hey, good morning, guys, and great to be on with you, and happy holiday season. Yes, sir. Right back at you. Jerry, we are very interested and eager to get you our first comments uh, on Shaq Leonard uh, picking the Eagles over the Cowboys. What is your reaction to that? Well, um, of course, uh, he we very easily could see him out here uh, against a Sunday, and, uh, uh, you know, I just have to almost step back when I think about Man, these are the times we're in when a player like that can be available and uh, uh, pick his team, which he can and does, and be on the field uh, within three or four days. And so uh, it's just a unique period of time and, and not in any way. If I sound like I'm complaining, I'm not, but that's just unique to me to think he could hit the ground running and be out there playing against the Sunday. But uh, uh, certainly uh, – on an individual basis, wishing the best. He deserves that. He's had a very distinguished uh, career, very. There was absolutely never a, a dollar, never any money mentioned. Uh, I met with him, uh, had lunch with him, and had a good visit with him, but uh, uh, but there was never a financial issue at all. Hmm. And uh, so that wasn't the case in any way. Uh, it, um, he apparently uh, wanted to go where he thought he had the best chance and, um, again, certainly recognize and honor his decision there. Uh, it never was an issue for us regarding uh, our confidence that we've gotten our linebackers. And one of the things that, that you do is uh, when you bring a player in at any position, uh, and if you have players that you really uh, want to keep active and want to stay involved with at that position, then you – deactivate somebody at another position. And so it's always a squeeze uh, as you are in the season as to who's going to be active on Sunday, who's not. And that has a lot to do with uh, where you're trying to bolster up uh, your personnel for a game or against a particular opponent. And so uh, uh, these things uh, don't automatically have the fit that you say, oh, my goodness, that can help the Cowboys uh, get him, even if it helps them a little bit. But there's a lot of moving parts that you push uh, that you compromise with in another way. So I know that's just enough to sound confusing, but the main thing is that uh, uh, we certainly uh, have enjoyed our, our visit with him, and uh, we'll get to see him Sunday. No, it was a good, detailed answer. We appreciate that. So, Jerry, was your understanding that – or you may not know, playing time was also equal across the board? Opportunity for playing no, time? I no, I don't know that. I don't know that at all. Not at all. And I, I, I don't have any idea how he uh, uh, arrived at his assessment of his time. Yeah. But I don't know that playing time uh, was something that we knew. We, we don't know what his play time would be either. Jerry, are you guys in, in the market for linebacker now in terms of just scanning, trying to find depth there, or was this a unique situation about the player himself? No, no. Uh, and again, without sounding trying, uh, we're in the market. If we can improve at any position, we're in the market. It's just that more likely than not during this time that you're unlikely going to find something that fits the uh, explanation I was giving you earlier. It, uh, it might give you a little better uh, uh, player at the sixth position on your team, sixth at that position on your team. But in order to put him on there, you got to take away the fifth guy at another position. And so all of that has uh, its consequences. And it, so, it's, uh, again, I want to point out that uh, uh, we certainly talked to him and uh, were interested on a certain basis if he could come in and uh, – he decided on Philadelphia, and that's it. Let's just uh, uh, do everything we can to uh, make him uh, wish he was on the winning side Sunday. Jerry, you know, we, we like to talk in, in the media amongst ourselves about like, oh, this player here, they seem to be talking a lot about the Cowboys. They, they, they must be just trying to tie themselves to the brand and, and create a, a leverage point for themselves or create discussion about themselves. Do you ever find yourself having to discern that when you get into these negotiations is, okay, is this guy really wanting to be here or is he just trying to use us as a leverage point with Philadelphia or another team? Nine times out of 10, they want to be here. And uh, if uh, you certainly, if you have the money right, uh, nine times out of 10, they want to be here. So I don't really 
spend uh, a lot of time uh, thinking about, well, do they want to or not? Now, you've got to assume that when they get here, they're going to act like, uh, play like it's the opportunity of their life. They're going to give you everything you got. And you can assume that. You can. Uh, but my point is, uh, we've got a lot of players out there. We dressed 53. We've gotten uh, 90 something on the team. Uh, and when you add one, you take away one someplace. And that one you took away is out there for a reason. And he was giving us something for a reason. And so you got to weigh that. So it's not all the time just real obvious how much someone can help you or not. Now, we wanted him. And uh, uh, we thought that uh, he had a place here. But uh, uh, again, uh, it's not like you've left some big hole here that uh, we don't have the ability to fill. We've got the ability to fill it. Jerry Jones here on the fan. Jerry, this is just a general question, not about Leonard, but uh, I remember you one time saying, I like being on Broadway. Uh, and we always talk about players maybe not fitting in New York, playing for the Yankees or the media coverage. How much does that ever play into the players that you guys have? Some that can handle the star, all the attention, our amazingly brilliant talk show, yeah. uh, all the TV topics, <laughs> and those that can't. How big of a factor has that been for you recently with the Cowboys of, of that spotlight? Hey, you and I know this is heaven here. <laughs> it's the place to be. Now, others may not think that, but we sure think it is the place to be. I can't imagine anybody wanting to be anyplace else. And that shows in my body language, I'm sure, and in the tone of my voice when I'm talking to someone. But anybody that has, uh, has got an occupation of football, if they haven't recognized that this is the football capital of the world, in my mind, uh, in Texas, and certainly with the Cowboys having uh, – uh, the the uh, status that uh, uh, they have, the interest that they have. Uh, all of this uh, is great. Let's say a young man wants to come in here, and then he's not going to be playing football all of his life. And so if he were looking for a place to set roots and really develop a career, because he's just a puppy when he quits playing football, and I say that lovingly, yeah. he's a young guy. And so this is a fabulous place to have created affinity for yourself, created credibility for yourself, and built a future. And uh, that's pretty apparent. That's pretty easy. to. That really is easy to sell. Jerry Jones joins us here at 105 Through the Fan. All right, take us through the range of emotions watching the Eagles-San Fran game. I know Steven said it in the station that you guys were you, – you preferred San Fran win because of the division. But at the same time, did you have an uneasy, demoralizing feeling about how – They've separated themselves from everybody else. Well, I, I presume you're saying they being San Francisco yeah. and Philadelphia. But, uh, uh, again, I just have respect for their team. Uh, do I think that we have a chance to beat either one of those teams when we play them? Absolutely, I do. Absolutely, we can. And I think we've got an outstanding chance here Sunday against Philadelphia. And I think it won't be the same game when we play uh, uh, any of these teams the second time. It never is. Uh, but do I expect uh, all out to, uh, the complete uh, uh, just an NFL uh, war uh, to, to over-exaggerate? Yes, I do. Because they've got great players, both teams, San Francisco and Philadelphia. They've got outstanding players. They've got great coaching. Uh, but, guys, we do too. So let's, that's what makes the ball game. And I guess that addresses what was going to be my next question, Jerry, the thought and the narrative, your reaction that, I mean, it's, it's clear. It's clear that San Fran is on another level, and then you got Dallas and Philadelphia. Uh, could you buy along with that, or you're just saying that's how I would no. play? Well, I'm not saying it's clear. It may be clear to you, and that, but it's not clear to me. Uh, I'm not so sure where uh, – uh, that's that remains. I will say this: uh, we sure have the opportunity. We've got the talent the way Dak is playing, and we've got the opportunity to win any game we play against either of those teams. Jerry, after the San Fran game, um, it's the offense, and, and really after the bye week, the offense has taken a complete uh, one eighty, a, a tremendous turn. 
you know, what was the biggest thing that changed there? Was there changes to the offensive system going back to more of last year's stuff? What 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 happened? I think it's uh, execution. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, basically uh, uh, the repetition of um, what Mike is wanting to do uh, uh, with the uh, offensive side of the ball. I think it's repetition by the receivers. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, the day in, day out uh, uh, work by the offensive line. And I just think you're you're seeing what happens in football and that if you work on something, which they have been since spring, that uh, given a chance, which they have had, uh, you get to repeat and you get better at it. And that's what you're seeing. And then, of course, our receivers are getting more comfortable with Dak. Dak's playing, at the, as everybody's recognizing, playing at an outstanding level in making decisions, much less executing and physically performing, but in making the decisions. Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen him play any better. All of that's what's happening, and uh, they all should get a lot of credit for it, Mike in particular, because uh, he's sold everybody on let's stay with it now and let's stay with these changes, these nuances we're doing, they'll pay off for us. Well, here we go, and we're seeing some of the uh, that work pay off. Jerry, how is what this offense that we're seeing right now, obviously, be f- and play fantastic, how is this different from the Kellen offenses that were near the top of the league in rankings uh, that you had in the past? Uh, I think that uh, we probably are getting the ball out quicker, uh, Dak is, and uh, uh, I think we're uh, uh, maybe working a little more on one side of the field or the other rather than trying to go through the whole progression across the entire field. Uh, and uh, 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 I think you've, uh, 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 I'm really uh, respectful and, and impressed with how our receivers are running their routes. Uh, and uh, I'm also, uh, uh, I think we've tried to uh, have an offense there that does what Dak does the best. Uh, when he's taking it up, he's taking it up judiciously when he runs. Uh, I think all of those things are a tick up from where he was. Jerry, Pro Football Focus had said uh, yesterday that Dak has the lowest turnover-worthy play rate in the NFL. So, I mean, he has completely, you know, changed his game. He's played at an incredibly high level. What is different about him and his game that that turnover-worthy play percentage has just plummeted? Well, we're not asking him to – he's not asking himself to uh, put the ball in harm's way as much. And uh, uh, you uh, uh, do certain things out there, and there's a good chance that, uh, uh, that you're going to have a, uh, a bad play, which can result in a turnover. Uh, he's uh, doing that less. Doing, I'm saying, exposing the uh, uh, ball uh, or the turnover ball, exposing it. It's not being exposed as much. Uh, they have a lot of times when they'll grade a throw that is not intercepted but grade it like an interception because it wasn't the right throw. And they'll grade it that way. Jerry Jones right here on 105.3 The Fan. Jerry, uh, you had told us a few weeks back you were fine with the Eagles' tush-push play. Uh, There's a report that Roger Goodell wants to get rid of it. Where do you stand on that topic today before you all have your Sunday night game? I haven't talked to uh, Roger about it. Uh, Stephen actually may have because he's spent some time there with Roger last week that uh, I didn't and they very easily could have, have been talking a little uh, uh, rule change. But the um, uh, point is that uh, I don't have that kind of issue with uh, uh, those techniques. That, to me, will ultimately take care of itself. Uh, we'll either uh, uh, do a better job of, of getting those results uh, interior lineman and uh, getting some pressure back against that. Uh, those things have a way of of uh, being adjusted after a period of time. Uh, usually it's cyclical. And when you see something really going, gets an edge on offense, you'll see the defense catch up with it, vice versa. And so I think you'll ultimately see uh, uh, that plugged up and uh, they'll be doing something else. I don't know that the pushing aspect of it uh, is where the battle is won. 
I think it's the initial get off. I think it's the initial positioning. I think it's the get, uh, lineman getting underneath the defensive guy. I think it's the um, uh, art of the quarterback to uh, feel the soft spots, the crack. Now, I really don't know because I haven't. Done, I'm laughing, but I haven't done one of these. But I think there's an art of the deal here, and it's uh, it, to me is not a problem. Hmm. Jerry Jones joins us here, 105 through the fan. Mike Florio uh, tweeted that he got a text. Uh, from an NFL head coach saying, quote, it's time for the owners to do something about officiating. What can be done about officiating? It's not so much as something that they could just watch more tape in May. What actually could be done well, I, to make the officiating better? Yeah. I'm a, I, must, uh, uh, I must have been in fog for the last 30 years. <laughs> but any meaningful, any meaningful rule change that I've ever seen uh, in any major issue no matter defensively, offensive, passing game, running game, the owners approved it. So I didn't realize that we won't approve it <laughs> officially. And I know we're paying them, the people that are officiating. Them, that is our money. Mm. <laughs> and you've always, uh, you, you've never had a humongous major problem with the officiating. You've always been complimentary except for your Halloween outfits. Uh, well, I recognize the challenge. No, yeah. I recognize the challenge. Yeah. And uh, let me tell you this. Uh, instant replay puts a lot of pressure on making the call on the field right, yeah. as it should be. I like it. Uh, but the officiating is a point uh, of the game. Uh, I'm reminded, and I've said it on this show several times, the two uh, baseball uh, plate umpires, and they're retired, and they're through and said, we were just having a beer. And one of them said, boy, when that ball came down through there, if it got a corner, if it got a little bit of that play back, front, high, if it was in there, I called it a strike. Said, I'm proud <laughs> of my career. And the other one looked over and said, let me tell you something. It comes down through there. And no matter where it was, if I call it a strike, it's a strike just as much as your was. <laughs> it's what I called it. So you're telling so we know we we know that no, we know there's judgment, and we know it can be wrong, and really uh, is wrong a lot. The idea of getting it right, uh, quote, with all that's at stake, uh, but uh, there's uh, it can be right. If you all agree that we're going to go on that uh, a guy's judgment, now he may be half blind, but we've decided that we're going to go on his judgment. We both agreed to it coming in, and uh, we assume that his integrity is okay and good. So it's just a question of did he miss it or not. Uh, I think we've always lived with that. So you're telling us that during your son's games, you were never the loud little league parent <laughs> heckling the umpire, disagreeing with the calls. Can you confirm that? I didn't hear I, uh, anything I said about the hit job <laughs> that I've put out on officiating in my life. <laughs> <laughs> or the frustration of the bad call or what have you. I didn't know that we addressed that one right there. <laughs> And, and do I have more foibles than anybody regarding uh, Malinos about a uh, uh, call going against me? Uh, I think I've got the record. <laughs> Last one, Jerry. With the hype and the buildup for Sunday night in Arlington, Cowboys-Eagles, of course, uh, give us your thoughts on the Howie roseman Nick Sirianni combo. We're always comparing in sports radio who's got the best front of it, the head coach, the GM. What makes them – uh, great or unique with, with dealing with Howie Roseman and observing Sirianni? Well, I think that uh, they're both very capable as, uh, and they're certainly um, um, making decisions at a very high level. Uh, I give them all of that, and, and you, you would. And they've put together some really fine football teams there. And um, uh, they've done it. Uh, it's uh, They've done it with uh, uh, Willie. Uh, they uh, did their quarterbacking thing. It didn't work out for them. They turned around, got another one, the one they got now, and that's worked out for them. And so you got to give them their due. That's hard to uh, uh, recover sometimes uh, when you zig and, and then you need to pull it back. I give them credit for all of that. So uh, I think they're very capable. I'll tell you, they are serious opponents. Uh, Jeff Lurie's no slouch. He's the owner. And uh, all of those guys are serious about this thing. And uh, 
uh, I can't tell you how much I'd like to beat them Sunday. Jerry, did you have any hot take or opinion on the college football playoff committee and whether they got it right or wrong? I didn't. I didn't, and I wouldn't touch that uh, <laughs> with, with your with yours. <laughs> Whoa, hey, I think we need to wow. let you go on that note. Thank All you for right, the. <laughs> thank you as See always, you Jerry. All oh. right, guys. See you later. Jerry Gosh. Jones, brought to you by Ford, built for Texas, built for you.